It's Monday night, and that means it's United Sessions. David Weezy Carl, it's episode nine of season three. So wonderful to see you, my friend. One away from double digits. They haven't canceled us yet. So close. So close. <laughs> if we say enough bad things today, maybe we won't be here next week. We're just asking for it. But uh, amazing guest tonight, uh, someone that we've been dying to get on. So happy uh, that we were finally able to make it happen. We are talking to New Mexican high school legend, uh inspirational legend while you were in college at seattle university obviously an inspiration now that you're back with the black and yellow sergio rivas welcome to the pod thank you thank you thank you for having me i have to get used to this still but <laughs> it sounds different right it's, yeah. it's way weird I gotta yeah. get used to it <laughs> for those watching at home you put the headphones on and everybody's voice is kind of kind of magnified by about three times yeah and you hear like every piece of the voice, whereas normally I just hear Lucas talking or I hear Sergio <laughs> talking. I can now hear like the moisture in Lucas's voice. <laughs> and not only is the moisture disconcerting, but just the near presence of my voice. Yes, <laughs> it's everywhere. It's omnipresent. <laughs> well, excited to have you on, Sergio. Thank you for hanging out with us today. Uh, we're going to dive into a whole bunch of stuff. We're going to dive into who is Sergio Rivas. We're going to dive into the upcoming season, which, by the way, this it week is game week. It's game week. It is game week, baby. For the first time in months, it is game week. We're excited. Uh, on the road this weekend. Let's dive right into it. On the road this coming weekend at Miami FC. Sergio, what are the feelings in the locker room right now as you head into game week? I think everybody's super excited. And having that bye week, we're just eager to get on the field more more than anything. And seeing the the teams play this past weekend was, uh, was great. Everybody's super excited. And uh, they're prepared. We're really prepared, I think. Yeah, so. I was watching the Miami Tulsa match this past week. Obviously, because scouting Mi Miami's the the first opponent. You sent your notes over to Coach Prince. Yes, I'm obviously. sure Zach has been waiting with bated <laughs> breath for what I have to say about it. Miami FC. That is absolutely false. Uh, did you get a chance to watch any of the US USL action this past weekend? I did watch a little bit. Yeah, I watched a little bit of the Miami game, yep. and I watched a little bit of the Hartford game. Yeah, Monterey. So there were there some, were a lot of goals in that one. A lot. Was that five <laughs> five three? Final? There were six goals in the first half. Yeah. I believe. Yeah, that was nuts. Yeah, it was crazy. And one of my good friends, Sam Glito, plays on. Yeah, Monterey, Sammy. So uh was watching that happy to see him out there it was it was really fun yeah we love sammy uh so he because he played you played with him in reno mm -hmm. he played here with the soul that's right so did you yep um and we're gonna we'll, we'll talk about soul days as well here in a little bit um but uh, just minor shout out yeah in the off chance she's listening carrie gleedle yeah oh god season ticket what, holder since day one what a what a legend yeah absolutely the whole gleedle family i mean they're yeah. big soccer folks also arsenal supporters so let's go no um yes they are no, <laughs> they all are yeah, that's yeah. absolutely true i know no, we're not gonna shout that out. um <laughs> but a, a good group absolutely a good group um but anyway so you you tuned into some usl uh this weekend what goes into for you again it's a little weird because it's a, it's a bye week to start the year that doesn't really typically ah, happen it's weird i don't but like it. what goes in for you just kind of preparing for that week one matchup yeah so we were um uh, we were able to see them play so we can adjust the way we're gonna play against them and see what kind of you know formation or tactical changes we're gonna do so uh for me personally is getting my mind right you know being able to stay in tune and focus on the objective which is getting three points that's ultimately the the goal and being able to stay calm and present and with, with what you're doing and being able to be prepared uh, physically that's the biggest thing yeah, you know of course. your body's got to be prepared physically you know lose you know you got a couple knocks got to make sure you you talk to carlos shout out to carlos carlos Olivas. carlos love that guy love that guy yeah oh it was it was it was so good to get him this year so yeah that's what it goes into for this first week yeah, love that. And you yourself, you're working your way back. You had a little bit of an off-season knock, nothing too crazy, but you're working your way back on that, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, working my way back. I should be back pretty soon, so I've been working on that and close with Carlos, and yeah, feel pretty good. Well, you know, we had the the full slate of USL Championship action this weekend, right? You could have watched any game you wanted to, but I watched five. To me, <laughs> the most important game was the black versus yellow game, hey, uh, which happened go. on Saturday in literally the most dismal conditions you could ever <laughs> hope to That was have. something, man. It was awful. I was chewing on dirt for most of that I, match. I, I think me and you combined made so many dorky references to sci-fi that... Yeah, I was what, doing what a was lot worse, of like our Jawas <laughs> yeah, our sand people. Yeah, 100%. What was worse? our references or the sand but you know you were out there what'd you see man like so i think the problem let's talk about the weather the problem <laughs> let's, is let's do that. <laughs> we show up so we show up about two hours early you know and mm -hmm. get prepared i show up it's a beautiful day it's sunny outside there's no wind there's no rain there's nothing i'm like oh what a great day to be alive. it looked beautiful right yes yeah 100 gotcha and then 
30 minutes later we're like oh double jacket you know two sweats like it's yep got your puffy jacket on that's just what drives me nuts a little bit you know but yeah it was great to see the fans out there still they were still watching 700 strong it's a packed house it was a packed house that's why i love it here that's that's exactly why i love it here but uh yeah it was good to see the black and yellow game and seeing you know the type of talent we have on the team and how competitive we are you know you saw it out there and it's just super fun to see the type of uh, character we have this this year so yeah i love it lots of uh fans in the chat saying hello cassandra says hello jane says hi uh, brandon uh, to or sergio or to me uh to all of us okay uh jane says hey guys brandon ortega specifically says serge uh, okay. uh gerard hi. burdick says good evening everyone david candelaria says hi ryan says howdy so lots of people in the chat saying hello if you guys have questions for sergio Comments for Sergio. Put them in the chat. We'll read them out here. Yeah, it makes our job easier. Yeah, it does. It makes <laughs> us have to plan very, very little. Uh, but you mentioned, you know, going into the season, Sergio, getting your body right, getting your mind right. Those are very crucial things. One of the other things that's that's pretty important, and I've heard you talk about it, I've heard Coach talk about it as well, is getting these guys to gel together as a team, right? Every year you've got turnover, right? You have players who leave, players who come in. This year, it seems, I've been obviously following this team since year one, from what I've seen, this team is gelling faster this season than I've ever seen uh, a New Mexico United team. And obviously, you've been here three years now. In your mind, is, is that factual? Are, are we gelling quicker? How are, how are the guys looking as far as that's concerned? 100%. And it does help that we have so many returners coming back. And yeah. returners that were playing good together even before. Like last season, we had Portillo, Will, Kaylin, mm-hmm. Harry. This is a part of like you know the, 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 the group. And, you know, it's coming into preseason. We could feel it from day one. We're like, yeah. whoa. Like, we're not starting from That's the zero. thing. You're like a step ahead, right? right. We're like, wait, wait, wait. That was a pretty good sequence right there. Right there. Like, you're not starting from zero. You're not figuring out how they move. You know, it's just more of like this fine tuning. You sure. know, we're able to, able to get to that pretty quick. So, no, I mean, like, uh, as a front office staff, we, you know, Coach Prince is wonderful to invite us down to observe training, to learn from him, to learn the ethos of what is behind the team. And, uh, you know, Dave's been here day one. A lot of us have been here from day one. Um, I'm not a soccer expert by any stretch of the imagination, but watching that first training session, yeah. I was flabbergasted. Yeah. Like at the connections, at the intuitiveness of people being like, okay, you're going to be here, so I'm going to be here. Like, they're, there's a piece that, again, not to criticize any past organizations or, or or any past iterations of this specific team, but like this time at this point in the season, it seems like there's just such a cohesiveness. Do you guys feel that in the locker room and out on the field? 100%. And we talk about it all the time. And like I said, helps that we have so many returners and not just returners, but we also, all of us get along off the field so well and like the new guys too right so so to your point to both of your points right that first training session we came out it was your first training session as a team we were out there for the first one that's right and i'm already seeing players joking around with greg hurst i'm already seeing josh dolan giving somebody stick josh dolan giving somebody stick excuse me like i haven't seen that in years past right it took a little while for for other new players to kind of bet in with the club it doesn't feel like it took that long for Timothy Zoli to immediately fit right in. Yeah, and that's another crazy part too. Is I was going to talk about is everybody fits in so well. Like Kyle, yeah, fit, fits in well. Sosa, Michael, Kyle Colonna. Yes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> did did we just have an? Uh, no, nope. might yep. have had. Yep. A You're good. Nope. Okay, You're good. we're good. We're good. We're good. Nothing happened. There's nothing to point out. It's all right. Kyle Colonna. Yes. Yeah. And Sosa and Michael. Yep. And all of them, what's going on? Nothing here? is going, going on. on. Lucas here? is just being difficult. Okay, ignore good. him. Yeah. Ignore him. I'm not being difficult. We just have a uh, a plan for how we're going to announce certain players, and we did not share that plan with you, and that's not on you. Okay, that's on us. Well, it's okay. You you've done nothing wrong, Sergio. It's just Lucas tell us being, about Kyle. Lucas being difficult. Yes, Kyle is a great guy. You know, on and off the field, he is just fits in really well. Great personality. I really enjoyed having him um, for the preseason, obviously on the team and. I can't say anything bad about the guy. No, he's a good mm-hmm. dude. Uh, we got a question here in the chat from Brandon Ortega, a friend of the show. Ortega. I need Sergio's favorite New Mexico food spots for best breakfast burrito. Oh, boy. Ooh, we were just talking about this. When was it? We were just talking about this. I've got mine. I think it was Weehan and a couple other players. We were talking about favorite burger spot. 
burrito spot. But for me personally, I like the Blake's burritos. Okay. You're Blake's That's a classic. Man. You're Blake's man. That's a classic. That's all right. I love the green chili. They give it a kick. Mm -hmm. You know, I go to other places and they have the green chili, but it's not very you know what makes spicy. It, you know what makes the difference at Blake's? It makes the difference between a good Blake's burrito and a bad Blake's burrito. You got to order the potatoes well done. It makes yeah, all the difference. Make them extra crispy. crispy. Make yep. them crispy. Yep. It makes all the difference. Otherwise, sometimes if they're underdone, they can be a little bit slimy. I love Blake's. Blake's is wonderful. Mm -hmm. My go-to breakfast burrito in New Mexico, burritos al estante. Oh. So good. I think so, we've so heard so that good. before. Yeah. I've never heard of that. It's, uh, they're, they're, I think they've got two locations, but one of them is downtown, actually not far from the Somos Unis Foundation office. It is my go-to spot. It can be a little bit pricier than maybe a typical breakfast burrito, but absolutely worth it. Burritos al estante, delicious. Best red chili as far as breakfast burritos go in town, and I'm a red chili guy. All right. I'm going to have to try it for sure. Yeah. Chat put together the comprehensive burrito list uh, so that we can put it out there for when we have ISC come back to town the yeah. next time or anyone coming into town the next time. Brandon has a follow-up, by the oh, way. Oh, 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 first of all, we need your breakfast burrito, Lucas. I, I, You know I'm a pain in the butt when it comes to this stuff because I don't eat eggs. Yeah, and oh, so that's that, right. That completely okay. changes everything. Yeah. Uh, but my homies over at Cinnamon have put together their breakfast burrito is bomb. Absolutely it's amazing potato-based burrito that is outstanding. Uh, Brandon's follow-up. The best burger place since you were talking about that too. So I couldn't come up with the best burger place, but I heard uh, Five Guys is pretty good. Yeah, but that's not New Mexican, right? Five like Guys is good. It's, yeah. it's a good burger. It's excellent. Yeah. If you're hungry. Although yeah. my favorite burger in town is also probably not. I don't think it's a New Mexican. I like Freddy's. Ooh. Is Freddy's New Mexican? It's not. No, it's, no, it's, not. it's not. It's a chain. It's, a chain. it's wonderful. Yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. I love Freddy's too. Yeah. Their shakes too. No, I, I smash would smash burger, man. It's so good. <laughs> I would not have a, yeah, a, smash a good. good New Mexican answer if we, I had not driven by this place earlier. But, you know, we have a lot of new staff coming into the front office. And so I'm thinking, where do I need to take them? Where do they need to experience? Um, so if you have never been to Hurricanes on Louisiana I have not. or Hortaconis or I don't know. Oh, wait, how there's, they pronounce there's one it. of those over uh, on the west side as well on the way to Rio Rancho. Mean green chili. Check, check that out, man. Yeah, I mean out. green chili. Okay. Burger. Um, Black Diamonds, uh, your question about Will Seymour's dance moves. We're going to get to that a little bit yeah, later. So on, it's a good question. It's, it's a, a good, good question. question. It's one we're going to get to. Um, I haven't started on that yet. Uh, <laughs> I got to warm up a little bit. You know? <laughs> going to get settled into the mic. Punzi says Rex's is her favorite. Oh, Rex's. Is so uh, Danette Medina says Padilla's. Uh, Black Diamond says potatoes well done, level unlocked. Potatoes well done on the on the breakfast table makes all the difference. Yeah. Especially if you got with move. Blake's with Blake's they do the shredded potatoes. Right. So you gotta get them crispy. If you do like the cube potatoes, it's not necessary, but I, we've gotten really off base. I've like never had that before. I'm gonna have to try it for sure. Oh, this is a great shout from Katie Emerson. Cosmos has the best burger and mac and cheese. I have had their mac and cheese. It is phenomenal. Cosmos mac and cheese. I Black think, Diamond says Griff's. We got all these suggestions. I think that's an it. issue for me. I, I got to get out there more. Yeah. I don't eat out too often. Well, you're a fine-tuned athlete. That is correct. <laughs> yeah. well, you know, in the off-season, I got to get out there because I don't You know. still got to stay fit in the off-season, man. Yeah, man. You're right. You're right. Yeah, but there's... <laughs> but you should live a little. You should live we don't, a little. We don't put unleaded gas in the Ferrari just because it's <laughs> November, pal. Come on. <laughs> but no, no, you're, you, to your point. Yeah, yeah, you got to live a little, right? Have some mac and cheese every once in a while. Yeah, because everybody comes here from out of town. Like, oh, Sergio, I heard you're from here. Like, what where, should I get? Where do we go? Yeah, I'm good... like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I like shallots. I, yeah, say so, yeah. I, I, I love Thai food. Oh, I love I Thai. Love Have you been to Solid Thai? Yes, Solid Thai right is here, amazing. Up the street, right here. It's, it's the my best. favorite place for Thai, uh, Pad Thai. It's so good. So good. There's also the good. Albuquerque restaurant session this brought I, to you by New Mexico United. We're gonna keep going with this. I love. <laughs> I am hungry too, though. Uh, <laughs> we're making Sergio hungry. There's also I don't remember the name of it, and I apologize if anybody who works at this establishment is listening. There's a Thai place right next to Flick's Brew House. I don't remember the name of it. It is so good. I've been to it. Yeah. Very, very good. Yeah. Right next door. It has an outdoor patio, uh -huh. too. Yeah, yep. I love it. Do that they place. deliver to Flick's Brew House? Flick's has their own food, so I doubt I it. I know they do, but yeah. like Flick's a, also has great food. Thai food while Flick. you're watching Top Gun Maverick. Like just sneaking the Thai food under your shirt? I don't know. <laughs> no, yeah. do not do that. I have many a fanny pack, <laughs> David Carl. Don't um, tempt me. Let's fill your fanny pack with bad Thai. Um, I, I do like the food over Flicks, by the way. We've gone really Very off base good. here. Very good. All right. Flicks, Bruce House. Uh, Sergio Very Rivas good. is a soccer player. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What's that like? Uh, remember that time you played soccer? Yeah, that was, was awesome. awesome. Um, yeah, I did it today a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anywho, uh, again, Miami on Saturday, mm -hmm. on the road. One thing that is different over the last couple of years from the USL Championship prior to is the level of kind of cross-country travel. You'd get it every once in a while. And even actually a couple of years ago, you didn't get it at all. Um, it was introduced for the first time two years ago. And now it's relatively common. We now play every team in both conferences, twice in the West and then once in the East. 
What is that East Coast travel like for you? Is it a big pain? Do you look forward to it going to these different cities? Miami is a beautiful town. That's where I grew up. But like, is, is that something you look forward to or something like, oh, we got to get through this? What is that like? For me personally, I love going on trips. It's like a vacation, right? So the way I look at it, and when we go to these Eastern you know, places, we we technically we usually leave two days before the game. Right. So, we so have, you're leaving on Thursday this week. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, I don't think it's a hassle. Maybe some of the players do think it's a hassle, especially if we go through Dallas. We were just talking about it the other day. We're going to get stuck in Dallas at some point today or this year. Yeah, it always happens. At always least once happens. or twice, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but if we have two days be before the game, I love it because uh, if you get stuck, it's okay. You have a day in between, whatever. Is, yeah. Yeah. But if we are traveling the day of, there's always those uncertainties that I'm like, oh, shit, what if we get stuck? Yeah. We're not going to train. Yeah. We're not getting enough sleep. My legs, all these things. But I've been loving the way that Zach does these these uh th this these trips mm -hmm. and leaving two days before yeah shout out zach and james salazar making those trips happen yeah, yeah. james salazar is a legend um sorry danette medina says lucas is the best i don't know what that's <laughs> oh, in i don't know what that's yeah, in reference you're to you're darn right sister i'm gonna wholeheartedly <laughs> danette you're wonderful i what? disagree yeah All right. sergio's yeah, no, got it yeah, no. sergio's got it oh i used to like the number seven um uh -huh. <laughs> dj ortiz says what's up fellas best red chili spots in town uh burrito express duran's kathy's carryout uh, wholeheartedly agree with you on all those. I also am a big fan of Monroe's Red Chili. Yep. Uh, that's probably my favorite Red Chili in town. Uh, best burger, he says, is Griff's. I've not had Griff's Burger. I need to try that. It's the several people have said this. You love Freddy's. I love Freddy's. So it's a steak burger. Oh, that's and what it's, Griff's and is. And is it local? Oh, yeah. Well, then I just need to do that. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, I yeah. try right and eat local all the time. DJO, great shout out. Griff's is A couple incredible. people said it. And then yeah. Katie got the correct answer uh, for me on the name of that Thai place by Flex. It's Thai Baran. Thai Baran. Oh, and then Jane Lilly just said the same thing. Thai Baran. Uh, best burritos, according to Aiden, uh, Hurricanes. 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 I don't know how that's pronounced. <laughs> um, anywho, we're going to take a quick break. We will be right back with segment two. Where we're going to dive into who is Sergio Rivas. Beyond just on the pitch, who is Sergio? What does Sergio like to do? What defines the person that is Sergio Rivas? We'll be right back with section two of United Sessions. Stick Love around. It.
Welcome back in to United Sessions. Sergio Rivas joining Lucas Cash and myself, David Wiese Carl, here on episode nine of season three. We chat a little bit about soccer. We chat a little about cheeseburgers, burritos, red chili, important things. Probably way too much about those. Things. No, not enough. <laughs> I love uh, Katie says Griff's is good and inexpensive. Um, we got a question here uh, from the chat. We're going to get to it in just a minute here, David Candelaria. Um, but we want to dive into a little bit of who is Sergio Rivas. What makes Sergio tick? What led you to the game of soccer? And that's where I want to start here. How did you discover the game? How did you fall in love with it? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, my all my cousins played it. In, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he gets a bonus for yeah, that. All yeah. my cousins played it back back in Mexico. They all played it. And um, I was never really into it. You know, I came to Mexico when I was about seven and a half years, years old mm -hmm. and still wasn't really into it. And then me and my older brother were playing at this Montgomery Park by Comanche and San Mateo. Yep. And then, you know, we're just playing it just to have a little bit of fun. And then I saw uh, two coach or two older men playing and they were like, hey, they, you guys want to come play with us, kick the ball around and start kicking the ball around. They invited me to go play on their team, Club America at the time. That's, that's what their name was. And then so I went to a couple of training sessions and I started falling in love with it. I really liked attacking. Yeah. You know, I like I think the biggest part for me is um, juking, like making making people miss, making people miss. Yeah. And I fell in love with scoring and all those things, but just soccer in general, you know, juking people and just the whole having the ball on your feet was just surreal to me. Is that for you? Is making somebody miss a better feeling than scoring a goal? No. Okay. <laughs> close. Yeah. Close. But Very that's close. The, no. I've so I've asked players, for example, yeah. who like assist all the time. Like, do you prefer assisting over scoring? And that no. Doesn't matter. They all everybody says scoring. Defenders prefer scoring. It's yeah. a great feeling. It's Not an, that I would know. Yeah. So I would rank <laughs> it as this: scoring, assisting, juking, okay. and a big time save. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you know how sometimes you you that make goal a line big clearance, time. man. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. I haven't had one yet in the pros, but. I hope it comes this well, year. Well, that's not really, for the most part, I mean, everybody can be anywhere, but that's not necessarily a spot where you would be expected to be. Yeah, yeah. that is fair. That is fair. Well, I mean, and I love you to death, but I do not hope that you make a goal line clearance yeah, me this neither. year. I, hope <laughs> I mean, it'd be certain. cool. It'd be cool. What I don't hope is one gets in the net. I'd much rather Sergio make a save than a ball gets in the net. Right. You know? So, so uh, Sergio, I'm a famously uh, non-schooled, non-educated person when it comes to soccer, right? I picked up the game way late. Um, and predominantly, and then immediately put it back down. <laughs> yeah, and then I was like, "Oh, that's oh, that's difficult." No, uh, working with the Albuquerque Soul, working uh, with Ron Patel, that's where I really developed my love for this game. And I remember going into a certain season, we hired Justin Sells as a coach, and he said he kept saying, "Shout out Justin Sells, oh, great Justin, guy, oh, it's amazing." I love that guy. Yeah, yeah, Justin Sells. And I enough good things to say about that guy. Great well, team. I'm going to give you an opportunity to say all the good things you want about him because Fantastic. he says to me, he says. We're gonna bring in this Sergio Rivas guy. You got to get ready. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so I like start researching the college career. You weren't there for tryouts. I had nothing that I could like actually observe one to one. But right. like, I see Gatorade Player of the Year. I see the career you have at Seattle. I see that Justin Sells, who's one of the most respected people in the New Mexico game, is like this guy's the real deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, talk about him. Talk about Steve. Talk about that youth development and how it got to where you're at today. There's yeah, there, there's so much to talk about and unpack, but I'll make it a little simple. Uh, I grew up playing with those guys. Pancho Macias first mm -hmm. recruited me to Nike '98. Uh, he spent about five years trying to get me to switch from Club America to uh, back in the day Caliente. Finally, got the chance to switch over, and he wasn't the coach anymore. It was this guy Justin Sells. Then Justin Sells, you know, I, I don't know if you guys have ever seen him coach. He's not <laughs> your usual coach. Yeah, I know I've seen him, but I loved it, man. I think he's—I I don't know "usual" is the right word, but he's certainly not like soft. Yeah, he's not no. demure. <laughs> no one's not ever kind. described. Oh, he's—he's he's, he's he's kind at heart. But he's kind when it comes but, to yeah, coaching. Gotta, yeah. He's like it's like Harry Swartz as soon as he steps on the pitch, right off the pitch. Harry is oh like the God, kindest, man. nicest guy. Mm -hmm. But then he scores his first goal last year, and there's f bombs all over the place, <laughs> you know. And that's not just, Harry's a great guy. But he's a, he's a different animal. Yeah. Oh, it's the same with Justin. There's something about that Harry Schwartz. Yeah. Right? We got to talk about that because yeah. Harry Schwartz is not what he seems, all right? <laughs> <laughs> you got to be careful with that guy. Uh-oh. Yeah, he's a, he's a crazy guy, you know, on the field, on the field. Love it. But, yeah, Justin Sells, you know, I fell in love with it right away because he was pushing me the hardest I've ever been pushed in my life. And I was such a competitive guy that I just clicked with it. You know, he was like, one day, I remember this perfectly. We were playing at Sandia High School or La Cueva High School, we were, we were having a scrimmage. I was like, hey, I need to come out. It's one of the first games he's been coaching. He's like, why? What's going on? I was like, oh, I'm tired. Like, 
what? Do you think Ronaldinho comes out when he's tired? What do, you, what do you think this is? Like, you get on the field. Like, you're not coming out. I was like, oh, shoot. Okay. Yeah. Since that day, I was like, okay, you can't come out you're not you're tired. tired. Yeah. <laughs> Justin put that in your brain from a young age. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if it's still his Twitter profile, but uh, I did take a picture of him that was his Twitter profile picture for a long time, and it was him just reaming people at an open tryout. Oh, was like it? He, he, like you can just <laughs> tell instantly someone is getting the business. And and again, uh, saying he's not kind, that's that's not fair on my part. He's he's an incredibly yes, kind person. Justin's wonderful. But there is not a person that when they're coaching a game is going to be more intense and yeah. more in the moment. Yeah, but if you look at it too, you know, Justin Sells, uh, he, I, I personally love the coaching style. One, he has so many players that went to college from his, yeah. from his era, so many players that play in the pro, yep. you know. Isaiah Madrid, you know, Justin Schmidt, you have so many players that have been in the pros. So, you know, it speaks, it speaks for itself. You know, he's a good coach. And then we got Steve. Yeah. Um, Steve Kramer. Kramer Fields. Lovely Fields. Oh, it's amazing. Oh, we my out there God. yesterday for the U23 trail. They're beautiful. They're unreal. So I never had the chance to play on those fields until today because we trained on there. But they're just great on your feet. Mm -hmm. You know, the ball is not bouncing. It's just I have nothing bad to say about those fields. Yeah. So, and Steve, I also grew up playing against him a lot because he coached for the 99s and the 96s. So then the 98s would scrimmage the 96s, 97s, 99s. So we always played against him. Yep. And he hated playing against me. <laughs> <laughs> you guys probably know why. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Steve. I love you, but, you know. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm going to wager a guess. It's because during the run of play, you kept going up to the sideline and saying really, really nice stuff about Steve. And he was like, I don't know how to handle this. Exactly. Yeah, this guy just keeps saying nice stuff about exactly. me. I just want to play a soccer game. Yeah. And. <laughs> Uh, Steve is also a very, very, very nice guy. I got to play against him, too, because we used to play um, the players against the coaches all the time. Sure. And Steve is such a good player. Justin Sell, Steve, Mike, uh, I forgot his last name. They were all such good players. So I grew up playing against them, being really close with them. And because my parents didn't really go on these trips, um, they were working all the time. So then I would go with Justin Sells or Poncho. And so I know them really well. I house hit for yeah. Justin Sells a lot. So. And so from that youth career, you go you go through Cibola High School mm -hmm. and then on to Seattle University. Uh, uh, picks up a Gatorade Player of the Year. On oh, the yeah, way. no big deal. Yeah, Gatorade, <laughs> Gatorade Player of the Year. Um, but so last year, I went up to Seattle uh, with David Estrada. We went up for the CONCACAF Champions League final. It was awesome. It was unbelievable. The day before the match, David Estrada and I both notoriously love sweets. So we did a Seattle Tour de Donut where we went to, I think, six different donut shops around Seattle to try and find the best donut. We tried them all. It was amazing. We rated them all, all that kind of stuff. At one point, we're at a donut shop, and I realized we're across the street from campus, Seattle University. So I take a photo, and I send it to you. And I said, you know, I don't even remember what I captioned. I think I just sent you the photo, and you're like, oh, yeah, I run that town. <laughs> was your response and so I, I said that i showed that to estrada he's like oh he better watch it estrada's like i run this town because i mean he's yeah, oh, the sounders yeah, yeah. yeah the sounders but, so yeah 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 <laughs> that's why you gotta you know, you're not gonna go toe-to-toe -to -toe yeah, with estrada no, no. Uh, estrada's a good guy you know <laughs> <laughs> no i just thought i thought that was funny but take us through uh seattle university that's i mean you don't see a lot of new mexicans go up to seattle uh, you don't, that's, that's not like a very common route. Mm -hmm. What led you there? Obviously I would imagine part of it is a scholarship. Mm -hmm. Um, but, and, and then take us through kind of your experience going from high school to college to the pro game. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, I think that a lot of people don't go up to Seattle cause they they get scared, you know, it's a beautiful they, town. People talk sometimes bad about it because of the rain and the clouds and all these things. Let me tell you, the clouds are pretty bad. <laughs> sure, sure. It is pretty dark, but the rain is not like. The rain is just consistent. It's like a mist. It's lovely to play soccer in. You know, it's it's amazing. But yeah, I think uh, a lot of it had to do with scholarship money. Um, Seattle University was uh, one of the few that was able to give me, you know, enough to go. Yeah. And more than that, I was always, you know, the, in the back of my head, it's like, I want to go pro. I want to go pro. What's going to give me the best opportunity? And I was thinking about, okay, Seattle centers are right there. Yeah. There's Portland yeah. Timbers pretty close. There's a the Pacific Northwest is a hotbed for soccer in America. Absolutely. Right. Even from the club system. Yep. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. And they have the Seattle Academy, Seattle Santos Academy, Crossfire Academy. Mm -hmm. I was about to go play with the Crossfire U23s back back then before I went to college. 
But yeah, I chose Seattle University for those reasons. Uh, I wanted to go pro yep. and I wanted to be closer to the MLS teams and the scholarship. And I also felt like they really, really wanted me there. And that's what I, where I performed the best is when sure. somebody really, really trusts me and they really want me in a certain position, that's where I'm like, excel the, 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 the go most. For it. So then, yeah, that's, that's what it really was for me. And then going from high school to college, it was a lot different because one, you're a thousand miles away from your family. Yeah. So that, you know, being on your own as a 17 year old, I was a pretty young uh, freshman in college, but yeah, it was uh, it was a lot different. The weather change for sure was a huge difference. The people, the desert to the monsoons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so ain't nothing like the PNW, the PNW baby, yeah. <laughs> the rain. But but you know you you mentioned wanting to the one of the purposes for going to Seattle University was again trying to get pro. Like that's a main focus, right? I want to go pro. I want to go pro. You did. You made it. So take us through that process of you've had this great career at Seattle University. What happens next? I mean, you're looking to go MLS, go USL. How did that all unfold for you? Yeah, it's a little tricky situation, but uh, so had a, I personally think I had a pretty good college career. I uh, went to the, was able to go to the combine and had a pretty good showing at the combine. Um, a lot of people didn't know that I was a uh, Mexican mm -hmm. and not American, so it was a little tough getting recruited by MLS teams because, because of the international slots. Yep. Not just the international slots. Even if I do take an international slot, I can't go to Canada. I can't go to Mexico. Oh. I can't travel outside. So for them, so if you guys had to play like you know Toronto FC, you couldn't go. I can't go. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's tough for a team to be like, hey, we're gonna give you an international spot because we think you're really good, but we know we're gonna miss you for at least three of the games. Yeah, and, that's tough. And if you you're in a team that plays in the Concacaf or plays against Mexican league teams or goes to preseason, I can't even go to preseason with uh, right. San Jose to Mexico because you know I couldn't leave. But Jeez. yeah, so. It's a little tough. ESL loves me though. <laughs> we do. We do indeed. I mean, yeah. me and me and David Weezy Carl can relate to this a lot. We are both so gifted in various skills I was that, gonna, our, I was that our nationality has actually kept us out from competing in a lot of different things. I cannot compete in Sweden in darts. What? Wow. What? <laughs> no, darts. No, no, that's not true at all. Okay, I'm just I'm just saying, like, I have never had that experience before in my <laughs> life where I'm so gifted and so good at something and can be Oh yeah, that deserved that. I the funny part that. is, I was just watching YouTube like last night before I go to sleep. And I saw this guy was playing darts, and you know, you if he hit the sixty pointer, like the twenty times three, yep. yep, every single time, and one like didn't miss a single shot. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, maybe you are pretty good. I don't know. <laughs> You're talking about an eight dart match. I am not that good, but yes, uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm sorry. I've made a terrible joke. It was. It <laughs> You're was really off. taking us off track. I am Lucas. really, really sorry, and so I will do my best to bring it back, which is. Seattle University. Mm -hmm. We move on to the next step. You play for Reno. Yes. Yeah, so you got score. Drafted. No, no, hold on. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, I'm holding you accountable right here. Okay. Because you go and play for Reno and you score a goal on us. Yeah. In 2019. What a jerk. Uh, Against the black know, and yellow. Sergio, did you <sighs> did you even have a modicum of feeling bad about it? The issue was that it was my first professional goal as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. Get out of here. I think it was my third start as well, first professional goal. And I remember seeing the comments on Facebook. Yeah. People from Albuquerque were like, look, if it's going to be somebody, at least, yeah. at at least, least it was Sergio. Sergio. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's a fair point. Steve Kramer actually said that. Yeah. No, he's. Yeah. that's the thing, right? Obviously, we never want to get scored on, obviously. But yeah, at least it was you, right? It's, it's better you than some random schmo from some other place, you know? Well, uh, yeah. Black Diamond says, um, it's actually a bummer that MLS teams wouldn't take a chance regardless of where you couldn't go. We're glad you're here. That's right, we are. Darn it. That's right, we are. Darn it. Uh, we had a couple other questions I want to get to uh, in the chat. One was from earlier, and it was from Chanel, and it got lost. We talked a little bit about your uh, youth soccer. Right. She was wondering about, did you play in any academy system? You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so I didn't. I had the chance to. And I was always scared to leave my parents and my family. I'm very close, you know, close to, with yep. my family. So then I had the chance to go to the RSL Academy, but that RSL Academy, the 97s were stacked. Yeah. There's so many pros in that, on that age group that, you know, it would, it would have been tough to get, you know, minutes, minutes and getting to that season. I think if I had the time, I probably could have maybe, you know, been the starter, but yeah, great, great team. And I almost went to the Texas Rush Academy. Okay. 
uh, what was the coach's name? Stay away from Sergio, Texas. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they almost <laughs> got him. They almost uh, they they bought me plane tickets and everything. And last May, like last week, I was like, you know what? I don't feel like I'm gonna go. But right. but here's yeah. the thing, man. You you mentioned something that that's really interesting with regard to that. I know you're you're we're having fun here, but you mentioned you you weren't ready to leave your family. And I think that's something that until recently, New Mexican players at elite levels had to at least consider, right? We're so fortunate now that we have the New yeah, Mexico United gosh, Academy. Point. Yeah. Um, you know, we had we've had players who played for the academy who prior to that had gone up to Colorado or, or Salt Lake or something like that, but they were able to come home. And I just yeah, I just want to touch on like how crucial it is to have that here. I mean, I'm sure you would have loved to have something like that when you were a youth player. Oh yeah, uh, I look at it now, and I who was I talking to? All, all these questions we we're just talking about, like last week's. Yeah. Um, yeah, having an academy, having something to look forward to like that. Some in not town. having to leave family. Yeah, well, I do think it's necessary sometimes. Eventually, of course, yeah. but if you're not ready, right? Yeah, I, and I wasn't ready, right? And uh, having something to look forward to, and have, and you know, Zach and Peter are doing such a good job at uh, giving the giving opportunities for these young players to have that dream and make their dream happen here in Albuquerque. I think that's yeah one of the best things I've seen in my lifetime, actually. It's one of my favorite things about New Mexico United, and there's a lot of things. Uh, but the, the the fact that we have this free-to-play, uh, no kid, even if they have the money to, can pay to be included or, or anything like that. All the equipment, all the travel, all the training is all included. And again, it's something here that keeps our elite youth players here Makes all the difference. Well, yeah. and I would add on top of that, Dave, it's what brings elite youth players back. 100%. Uh, from my time with the academy, right? We had a number of people playing up in a different academy somewhere, yeah. right? And it, it was tough on them, right? Being away from their family, yep. being away from home cooking, being away from all the, the beautiful trappings and comforts of home. Mm -hmm. And to have the opportunity to come back and say, I get... I get my cake and I get to eat it too. I get to play incredible. Get high, my red chili and I get to eat it too. High elite level soccer against the best competition you could ever have. And I get to be around those people that I know, love, and have my back. Absolutely. Eternally. Yes. Shout out to the Somos Unidos Foundation. You guys are doing a fantastic job. Amen. And I'm really thankful for you guys. Uh, David Estrada in the chat wondering, did Sergio enjoy planting a tree last week? What did he learn? <laughs> Saludos. You know what? I'm actually a pro at this now. Yeah, I was let's actually go. paying attention. It you was were listening. Crazy. Yeah. I was listening. Like, the thing about the crossroots? Don't tell the people? Yeah. So, well, I don't know about the crossroots. You know, okay. there's, there's a lot of information. All right. Okay, all right let let right. me tell you what I I just know, called okay? you out. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, you know, I thought when you planted a tree, you just grab a tree, dig a hole, you put it in. Stick that bad thing Right. In you there. water it. Right. <laughs> yeah. You water the thing, right? No, 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 no. Um, what you do, <laughs> what you do is you dig a hole and you got to make sure that the roots, um, are not too high. Oh, the flared base part we talked about. The yeah. Yeah. You got to make sure it's at the right height. Mm -hmm. And when you water it at first, you do want to water it close to the stem, mm -hmm. but then as the tree grows, you want to, yeah, you want to water it. Like if this is a tree kind of like around, like. Yeah, you got some you know, space like, around the area. Yeah, and you want to cut those roots too, because sometimes roots can suffocate a tree. So and yeah, it we talked. That's what we we're talking about. So we, we learned from these awesome people at uh, Let's Plant Albuquerque. They were amazing, wonderful uh, through the Parks Department through the city, and they were talking about yeah, if if you plant it too shallow, then you'll have a root that will cut across like the top of where like the the base of the tree is, and it will choke out the tree. The tree will be dead. Yep. No way. Yeah. Yep. It's it's things you don't think about. And not just that. So if you don't plan it right, the right height, you're gonna get what you got a couple weeks ago when the wind was super high. Oh. So instead of the uh tree kind of bending and moving, which is very strong, you're gonna get a part of the tree where it's too uh it's not strong at all and just breaks and it falls on the street. Yep. Goodness okay. gracious, David. I feel like this has been one of our more educational episodes we've ever had. Jay, right did now. we just lose camera? <laughs> Jay, is everyone missing us? They really want to see David's face. <laughs> All right. Yes. Stick with us, folks. Uh, we are normally a audio medium, predominantly technical difficulty. Okay. All Sorry right, there we go. Now we're an audio visual medium. The, uh, the camera cut out there for a second, folks. Sorry about that. We are back. Um, she anyway, was asleep at the wheel. We were we were talking about trees and stuff. Uh, Blame you, Jay. It was Love great. Trees. trees. Very great. important. Very important. Oh, what's oh, overheating? Okay, hold on. I'm just gonna put in the chat that we'll be right back. Uh, David, could you be less attractive? 
<laughs> oh, there we <laughs> are. We're back. We're back. Stop overheating. All right. So our camera is overheating, folks. Stick with us. We're not going anywhere. Um, we had that issue at Matushi's. Did you? Yeah. Camera overheated? Camera overheating. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change out the microphone. I mean, the camera. To the non-overheating to, camera. To just my laptop. <laughs> there Ooh. he is. Wow. Hey, everybody. We oh, are now. On, it's going to overheat. We're on the laptop camera. <laughs> Sorry about that. The regular camera was overheating. We are still here. There's Sergio. There's me. We are here. Uh, we're making it happen. Yes. Anyway, so we were talking about trees. Yes. <laughs> Sergio learned Welcome a lot. Welcome back to Tree Talk. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Let's Plant ABQ. Yes. Um, that and, was a lot of fun. And Go thank ahead. you, uh, David, for inviting me. Yeah, David Estrada, Sorry. making things happen. Absolutely. Um, we got a couple of different questions in chat here. Um, here we go. From Tony Ruiz, how was your experience in Real Madrid scouts? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout, it's a throwback, huh? What a throwback. Wow, I completely forgot about it's like that. A, it's like a Nardwar interview. You guys ever seen Nardwar? No. Oh, he's this guy, and he interviews all these rappers, and he's like pulls like the most – unbelievable things like he was interviewing tyler tyler the creator and he like brought up his rap name from when he was in middle school and nobody knew it but nardwar knew it sorry go ahead wow. real madrid <laughs> scouts nardwar yeah so you know what a throwback i was about 13 years old so uh at this time i was getting scared about the u.s national team and uh rush had this program where they invited about 35 players over the world um to go and try out for real madrid and play against some teams up there so uh, I was able to get this uh, paperwork by the United States immigration to let me go for a week. Yeah, was able to go and have a fantastic time out there. It was it was great. The That's awesome. Learned a lot competition wise. Ronaldo was there. I was able to see Ronaldo. What? I actually saw Neymar score his first goal for Barcelona. Wow! In person. Did he do the dance? He did not do the dance. Okay. It was a header goal. That's amazing. It was really cool. All right, we got time for one more question before we take another break and go to Stupid Silly Game Time. Uh, it's going to be from Brandon Ortega. What is Sergio's favorite sport to play other than soccer? Ooh, that's that's a great question. It's almost like you're a journalist. Chanel, says, Chanel says too much hot knowledge is overheating the camera. Um, <laughs> but that's a good question from, from Brandon. Your favorite sport to play other than soccer? Is soccer your favorite sport to play? Because that's not always the case for soccer players. 100%. It There's is. nothing yeah. I'd rather do kick the ball around. Because I know like Chris Weehan I bet you if you asked him and he was complete, he had to take like a truth truth uh, serum, a he'd probably one. say golf. It's a hard yeah. one. Uh, that's what I was going to say. There's two. There's two sports. We're losing. Yeah, we're there. there we're there. Go. This is really, we're really going through it tonight. I uh, really <laughs> enjoy playing basketball. Yeah, I love sports regardless. I yeah. love tennis, volleyball, but I do love playing basketball. But recently, golf. Yeah, getting into golf. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. Well, what has gotten you into golf? What made you pick up the club for the first time? Why? Shoot. And it's recent. Lucas it's Cash. It's literally last month. Yeah. And first of all, Weehan talks about it all the time. He has his camera on all the time. Uh his his phone watching, you know, golf and I love watching golf too. But I just went out one day when my little brother started playing. I was like, wait a second. Just I, on a random course here in Albuquerque. Yeah, well, we went to go do the nine hole course, the executive at Ladero. Okay. Beautiful. That's, I, you know, I live on that Beautiful. golf course, right? Yes. Yeah. You could have <laughs> told, you you like you did, did did told me you were coming. I would have brought you lemonade over the over the fence. Same yeah, right. I know that now. You should come play with us. I've never golfed in my life. <laughs> Super hard. I, I, don't know how to, <laughs> I don't know how to golf. I've never done it. I'm really, I've gone to Top Golf and been absolutely horrible at it, but I am good at mini golf. That's there right. I love mini golf. Get you some mini golf. The putting. Fun. But yeah, I uh, I was sitting there playing for about two, two or three hours, and I realized, okay, two or three hours have just gone by. Yeah. I haven't thought about anything other than playing golf. It's like gets gets you away yep. from everything. Oh, right? yeah. It's amazing. That's so, yeah, nice. golf. I like that. Golf. Shout out to Bees. We hand. This is a golfer. I think Kalen's a golfer. Yep. yep. We have a couple golfers on the team. A lot, yeah. I'm sure there's others. Portillo a does a little bit. JP. Okay. Uh, Jerome Keys, a veteran. For every shot, he's <laughs> I heard hit that. His life. Yeah, just putting with a four iron. <laughs> yeah. I know what that means. Um, <laughs> all right, we're gonna break. We will be right back on the other side of that break with a stupid silly game. Stupid silly game time coming up next. Lucas, brought to you by Sergio Riva. Congratulations! Thank you for sponsoring the segment. We'll be right back. I got you guys. <laughs>
Welcome back into United Sessions. We are on the laptop camera today because what's uh, up, laptop? Perfect. About I don't know, ten minutes ago, our camera overheated, but we're 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 fighting through it. We're making it happen. Uh, we are back for segment three of episode nine of season three of United Sessions, and it is Lucas' stupid silly game time. Take us through today's stupid silly game. Uh, I, it would be a pleasure, Dave. Thank you. Yep. Um, so, as a few people know, I have really been studious with my Duolingo. And so I, have, I have picked up a, si. a a fair amount of of Espanol. Eso. <laughs> Hola. And so I, I Hola, know, my I Lamo know. Lucas. <laughs> if, if 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 my lessons have proved correctly, uh, I understand that the word vas means you go, and if we were to say no vas, that means you don't go. Mm -hmm. So today we're gonna play rivas slash renovas. So ah. I'm going to lay down eight scenarios it's for you. It's go or no go. Go eight, or no go. Eight challenges that are okay. going to be laid down to you. Hypotheticals Oh, shout to you. out Ryan Woodward. He's at a 927-day streak on Duolingo. Let's that, go. That a boy. That a boy. Ooh, what what Ryan. language, Ryan? We want to know. Yeah. Hopefully, go ahead. Hopefully let's it's test Spanish. It right now too. And let's be friends because friend quest is a great way to pick up extra gems. And I don't know what any of that means. Okay. Stop it. If it's Spanish, <laughs> let's pick it up. Stop together. it. So anyway, I'm going to I'm going to put down eight hypothetical challenges. Oh, Japanese for Ryan. Go on. There you go. Love that. There you go, lad. Konnichiwa. So, it's going to be a two-part question for you. Do you take the challenge? Okay. That's where it's rivas or rinovas. But then where we're going to follow up is are you going to win that challenge? Okay. Mm. Are you going to are you going to take them out? Lovely. All right. Let's so, rivas. We, we've been talking about it a while. Rinovas for the first one and then do you win, right? That's the right. second part. So first one you know what it is. A dance oh, battle with Will God. Seymour. Rivas, Rinovas, and do you win? Somebody text him right now. I'm talking yeah. right to you, Will. Producer Linnea. Well, right to you. Producer well, Linnea. Listen. All right, we're going to come back to that one, actually. Producer Linnea, <laughs> please, can you please text Will and say, when you get into the chat, put just let us know you're in there because we'll come back to this one. Oh, my God. My blood is boiling. <laughs> He's hot. He's hot. All right. All right. Lucas, you want to take us to the second one? Yeah, absolutely. Rivas or, no, or Rinovas. An arm wrestling match with team owner, CEO, and president Peter Travisani. So, do you take that challenge? Yes or no? Rivas or Rinovas? And then, do you win if you take that challenge? Do you guys know if he works out often? He does Have work out. Seen? He does Have work out. He is you've really. Seen his, you've fit. seen his biceps, yeah. right? He is pretty fit. Yeah. He's a big guy. And you know what? He played college basketball or college football, right? He did. right. Boston College. He'd line back you. Yeah, Rinovas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, he doesn't want any of the smoke. No, that's oh, my boss. I wouldn't either. I wouldn't either. I would, <laughs> either. I would be a Rinovas for me as well. Yeah, he. You know what? He's really fit. Yeah, you know? he is. Yeah. Oh so. no, Pete's in shape. Yeah. No, we could have done a million of these for Pete specifically, and I think all He's... of my answers would have been Rinovas. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to race him. I don't want to fight him. I don't want to. I would race him. him. I'd race him. Oh, you think I'd race Pete? Pete. I think oh, it'd be a race. Race. If you're listening, Pete, Travis. Peter. Oh, Linnea says she could beat you too. Yeah. Nonsense. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Peter, if you're listening right now, I challenge you to a foot race. Wow. <laughs> Let's go. Wow. For charity. L loser donates uh, money I, to I the Somos Unidos awesome. Foundation, <laughs> but you have more money than me, so you have to donate more when you lose. Um, all right. Number three, a cooking showdown with Kaylin Ryden. Wow. Rivas, Rinovas. No us. Oh. I'm really bad at cooking. I'm okay. trying to get better. My my food is just white rice, chicken. I love that. And that's basically Throw it. Throw some broccoli in there. Come on. Some broccoli. Yeah. You know what? I like that's, that's a simple meal. It's delicious and healthy. Yeah, I'm more of like a mushroom type of guy. Oh, that's good too. I like mm -hmm. that. But to make a food joke, Kalen will eat your lunch at this challenge. <laughs> Kalen's good yes. cook, right? <laughs> he's a great chef. Yeah. He is really good. Yeah, he is really good. You and know he's what? cooking for baby now too. Come on. Yeah. And my parents are cooks. So how can I not cook? Well, right, like yeah. because they're good cooks. That's completely yeah. yeah right. they, I don't have to cook. I just right. go home, right? A hundred percent. A hundred problem with privilege. All right, Lucas, uh, Rivas or Rinovas, <laughs> a foot race with Amando Moreno. I will uh, Rivas. Yeah, he's gonna take mm -hmm. that challenge. I I'm like take it. that challenge. And know. will you win? Oh, you know, he just hit like a nine point six Oy, vamos a meters per second. Which is pretty fast. Um, That's a speedy man. So yeah, I'm yeah. probably not gonna win, but you'll take the challenge. But I'll take, take the, the challenge. I like that. I See, like there's that. some, yep. there's some, there's some spirit in that, knowing that, hey, I might not win here, but I'm still gonna try. Yeah. So a lot of people think, well, there's a joke going around that I'm not that quick. Okay. Right? 
I'm very I've never quick. I've never heard that joke. I have not heard it either. Well, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. But I'll thank make, you for not hearing it. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, the GPS says it all. You know, we hit certain right. numbers. You That's got the Titan data. You got the Titan data. Nine point two, my highest last season, baby. Numbers, let's go. numbers don't lie. Exactly, right? That's right. Numbers don't lie. R E D W. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's right. Numbers that count. Uh um, do we have Will Seymour yet? He hasn't said anything in the uh, chat yet. He's, he's scared. He's scared. Uh, he knows what's I coming. Feel, yeah. We've tragic. talked about it in the locker room. He, he knows what's coming. This is, <laughs> this is tragic. This is really tragic. All right. Up next, Rivas Rinoas, a poetry contest versus Daniel Bruce. See? That's a strong mate. <sighs> a strong one. Come Rivas, on, mate. All right. I'll all right. take it. Yeah. Will you win? Ah, see, you guys are giving me some hard ones because <laughs> Lucas, Bruce Lucas, is, uh, Lucas notoriously makes these games difficult. This is really difficult because I believe I'm a I'm a sweet guy. Yes, I'm a sweet guy. I agree with that. And you know, if I put my head down at work, I'm gonna get you know I'm gonna get some good stuff down. Right? Put some poetry. stuff on paper, yeah. But Bruce is just a sweetheart, man. Like <laughs> I didn't say it had to be a love poem. It could be really dark and brooding. Oh, you know what? That is so true. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah. I might take that. All right, yeah, I'm gonna take it. and I'm probably gonna win. All right, can we do it for uh, charity? Let's do it. Uh, Let's so do it. Speak, speaking of uh, player related things for charity, one of the things we talked about uh, when Will was on uh, is we're talking about doing a uh, trivia contest. The trivia teams. Uh, so it would be like bar trivia kind of thing. Yep. And so fans can make their teams, four, five, six players, whatever. But we would also have a player team Ooh. and we would have a coaches team. Zach said they're in. So who would be your six? This is not part of the game. Who would be you and five other people? players for the tri for trivia yeah and I, and I will say you want to have a well-rounded team right maybe you got right. somebody who's really good at music and somebody's really good at sports mm -hmm. or, or whatever pick your five number one Kalen Ryden okay Whoa. why he just knows He's really a lot handsome of, that's you <laughs> <laughs> he is very knowledgeable about a lot of just well-rounded well-rounded okay if Jerome Kiesewetter was here yeah I would choose him smart guy it's very smart guy but since he's not I'll pick Brucey okay. knows a lot about uh music he's well traveled well traveled yeah. and great um, accent he loves oasis it's his favorite band <laughs> yes <Yeah>. yes <laughs> that true. Yeah, it is that's true that's not a joke uh he and brandon uh who is who's in chat right now brandon ortega they jam together uh brucey on the drums he's a hell of a drummer uh and, so are we gonna see champagne supernova from brandon ortega and daniel bruce I mean, this season I mean, that would be pretty cool <laughs> okay all right sorry keep it going you've got kaylin you've got brucey I'm going to have to take Josh Suggs just Suggs, because yeah. he's a hunter. He knows a lot about, you know, the earth. You're not battling earth. people. It's a trivia contest. <laughs> yeah, but I he think, knows a I lot. I think Suggs is a good <laughs> shout. He knows a lot. I think he it's does. a good shout. Yeah, and uh, I think he's, he's going to be a good fit. Um, I'm going to take Portillo for sure. Yeah, okay. Always Portillo. Take he's got good um, sports knowledge even outside of soccer like he loves the saints he loves the pelicans like yeah. he's got good sports what, he's going to be a, a great sports, distributor yeah. this is your ah. question Sergio. <laughs> i like that question, i like that Kaylin. fantastic distributor leads yeah. the trivia team and assists i like <laughs> yeah. it yeah and um how many more do i have left one more Uno más. that's very important the last one's huge nate walzer oh yeah no, he's <laughs> gotta be a player choose coaches? no coaches are on their own team <laughs> okay nate. i wouldn't choose nate but oh. I'm just kidding. Man. I'll choose you. <laughs> I would take um, Josh Dolling. Oh. Dolls. Josh Dolling. Okay. Dolls. He's sneaky smart. You know, he's very sneaky smart. He doesn't talk much, but when he does, you know, he really. You listen. I listen. Yeah. yeah. So walk, walk, listen, talk softly and carry a big stick. You know, it's yeah. like make sure that your words matter. Yep. You don't say too much, like Lucas. Um, oh. <laughs> Uh, no, it's funny. Uh, Chanel has made a ton of Teddy Roosevelt references with you. And there you that, go. That's another one. That's beautiful. Perfect. All right. Back on this really, really important game. Will, yes. Will, get in the chat, man. Come on. Will, what are you doing? We're waiting on you, Will, to do this other one. What a coward. Wow. Jeez. I'm, I'm calling him out. Anymore. All right. I'm getting inflammatory. All right. All right. <laughs> Rivas, Rinovas, substitute teaching versus Austin Yearwood. I, Rivas. Rivas, 100%. Like and I'm teach. winning. Yes. Ooh, well, okay. there's a difference between teaching and it's being a so, substitute teacher. That's so, it's such an important point. 100%. Yeah. You, you know, when the substitute teacher comes on, you know, you know there's a difference than when your teacher is there. Yeah, 100%. And, and I don't think Yearwood would be a great substitute teacher. Why? Because he's going to be the president one day. 
So, <laughs> amen. He's very strict okay. and he's very, you know, as a way that things need to be done. Articulate. And you know that the students don't really have that respect for a substitute teacher. So I think I could be the cool guy comes in that everybody loves, you know, like, oh, I wish my sister, okay. you know, whatever. Okay. I like that. I think this is on me that you I put, did not puts, set the puts proper Bill metric. Nye up on the TV. <laughs> who would be more likable versus who would be the more effective teacher? It's, it's however Sergio <laughs> yeah. wants to interpret but, it. But the substitute teachers don't have to be super um, good at, you know, that, you know, like their job. So yours, actually, yours know, like, might be a better teacher is what you're saying. Yes. You would be more liked by the kids. Liked and it's probably have more control. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. That's a fair point. Yearwood. That's an interesting conversation. On the off chance you're walking or watching, you can get in here and defend yourself. I don't. I don't, I don't I think, think that's, that. I don't think that's a, a, a knock on Yearwood at all. He's not out here. He's saying I he actually know. said Yearsy would be a better teacher. I mean, I put it's a just lot a stylistic of stylistic thing. I put a lot of thought into these games. Dave. Clearly, yes. yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, next one, Rivas Rienovas, one on one basketball versus Harry Swartz. I know you both wow. like b-ball. Wow. We you both do. This about is a good one, too. Lucas. I like and you know one. what? Harry does pride himself. He's good. He does pride himself into the. And it would be really, um, it would be a really good match. I'm gonna Rivas it. Oh, uh, it's gonna be a tough match. I probably won't take it. I don't know if you guys have seen Harry Schwartz. He's always on the ground. He's a feisty little guy. He is. So being able to get around him and you know. But you'd go for it. I'd go for it for sure. And you I, think I'm, Harry would win? I don't think he would win easily. But do you think it'd be a close one? It'd be close. If I if luck is on my side, I might be able to take him with the three pointers. Is Harry gonna okay. have to do something nefarious to beat you? Is he going to have to do some Harry gamesmanship? Well, he always is. Doing is he going to pull one of your leg hairs out? Yeah, he's, he's, he's one <laughs> so of those guys. Specific. He's one of those guys. Yeah. You got to yeah. do whatever it takes to win, man. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. 100%. All right, final one. It's a TV show or TV show trivia contest. And the show is It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I love that show. And your opponent is David Weesey Carl. <laughs> I love that show. <laughs> I've seen every episode of that show six times. Rivas, I'm taking it. Oh, he's gonna take just out of just out of pure disrespect. You're just not gonna give it to him, or you love "It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia." I actually, I'm very bad at trivia. <laughs> Do you love "It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia"? I've never even seen it. Oh my god, <laughs> he's still just gonna take I it. Was, I was about to just hit you with like some obscure <laughs> trivia question from "It's Always Sunny." I was about. Mm. Have you guys ever seen "Cien Mexicanos Dijeron"? <laughs> no. no, it's like uh, it's Do like Family Feud. Yeah. It's like that, like you know, they interview people. Ask a hundred people. It's yeah, exactly like that. CN, I'm yeah. very good at that. Okay. Yeah. So I don't Just know if it's know like what that. people think. No, yeah, it's yeah. always sunny. It's in always Philadelphia. sunny. In Philadelphia could not be further from family. It, okay, yeah. <laughs> it is a. Uh, it's a. It's a sitcom. It's uh, raunchy and terrible. It's based and hilarious around okay. Philadelphia. Yeah. I'll yeah. take it. Just to be there. Yeah. I won't win. No, you. Won't. But I'll take it. All right. I like it. Just to spend time with I, you. I, I, nice. I love that show. Okay. I love <laughs> that fine, show. Fine, fine. All right. Do you want to go back to the original? Yeah. Since we I, have a coward. Don't call Will a coward. <laughs> Will is a nice man. I love Will yeah. so much. He's All right. A coward. All right. So, Will, whether you're here or not, we're going with it. Rivas o Rinovas. A dance battle with Will Seymour. Rivas, I'm taking it 100%. <laughs> 110 percent i this that's probably the easiest question that you guys have to ask him. <laughs> but what about his comments that he made last time he's like yeah i'm gonna destroy this like there was there he was said no, something about dancing to country music. there was no yeah, hesitation so, yeah. on his side exactly and that's yeah. my whole point i want to ask the chat is is it part chat. yeah chat also so, speaking of chat chanel says uh you're not she's not surprised that sergio would sweep family feud because he's a man of the people i love that yeah that's a great comment. thank you yeah. Man of the people. Chanel should be on there. Sorry, I'm out there. I talk to people. You know, I know what people like. Yeah. You're asking the know. chat. You're asking the chat. What are you asking the chat? I'm asking the chat. Isn't part of being a good dancer being able to dance multiple genres? Yes. And country, I think, is a big part of it, too. 100%. I think you're right. Like, I, I'm going to take myself out of this because I'm a terrible dancer. I'm the wrong person to ask. Lucas, if you got an opinion, you go right ahead. I'm an awful dancer. As many people can probably tell from my physical appearance. You're a great dancer. I, I'm a great dancer. Yeah. Um, I could see that. Care, care a lot about dancing. Yeah, I, I agree with Sergio 100%. No. And and uh, then he was trying to say that, oh, it's two steps, two to the left, one to the right. No, that's no, just a no, simple no, no. start. That's slow, slow, quick, quick, that, slow. That, yeah. just, that just shows his. Like, I, I there's know, so many different variants saying. to country dancing. You can start doing like the circle, the line dancing. There's the, so many variations of the two step. Yeah, to, absolutely. To just, to just, just narrow like, all like, of country western dancing down to but one it's style. Kinda, it's kind of like sometimes I whip and sometimes I nay-nay. Yeah, well, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Apple bottom. I love that. I actually <laughs> love that from you. 
but but okay let's say let's say we have maybe five okay. genre of dance yes you're obviously gonna win country western yes, whatever 100 variety of that okay is. okay are we just gonna pick five random genres all right i don't know my five. Turn. i don't turn. know five my genres turn. of dance polka Ooh. You, you said i could pick Ooh, any genre. leader hosen <laughs> the leader hosen. i don't even know what that is it's a polish dance for your boy michael often with uh accordion accompaniment yes you know what? Uh, i think i've seen it yeah is it in a lot of movies? Probably not. Okay. Probably. Not. I mean, maybe Polish movies. <laughs> then I'm thinking about, oh, it's the the dance and then he slams it with their feet. You Are know? you talking about Irish River Dance? Is that what it is? And they go, ah, maybe. No. I mean, I'm, I'm trying I to get know. inside your brain. I, right I was now. I was just being difficult. Saying I just polka. think we can raise a lot of money for the Semos Unidos Foundation. Yeah, we have we have Black they, Diamonds in the chat saying, "Show us your dance moves." We should we should raise some money for the foundation. That's what I'm saying. Sergio that. versus right Will. Now. No, I, <laughs> just kidding. We'll, we'll do polling on social media yep. to determine what the five categories Genres. are. But let's, yeah, let's, let them know ahead of time so they can yep. prepare. That's right. Get a get a routine going. Get us great. Maybe get a choreographer to this help. Is a, this is the most important thing we've ever done as a podcast. I'm Absolutely. sure Zach yeah. Prince, the week leading up to the home game, is like, yes, this is exactly we what I want. Uh, Danette says Sergio versus Lucas. And if, if you were a man of the people like Sergio was, yes, maybe. Oh, there you go. I am a man. Maybe that people. needs to happen as well. I can you. 100%. There you go. I like you. it. I like it. it. All right. I'm ready. All right. Sergio, I, I, it's fair to say I think you 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 handled Rivas. He won. Rivas, no problem. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Um, before we call it an episode here, we do what we always do, which is give you the floor. You got a minute to shout out whoever you want to shout out. Say hello to friends, family, whomever. The floor is yours, Mr. Rivas. All right. Jesus Christ. I was not prepared for this. But, um, yeah, what are you, out. Lucas Cash on the PA, Mike? <laughs> Take it easy there, pal. Shout out to all my teammates. Especially Will. I'm so glad you're not on the, the <laughs> chat right now. I'll see you tomorrow, buddy. Um, shout out to... Um... <laughs> Thanks, audience. I'm yeah. still getting used to that. It's our, it's our big studio audience here. Oh, I love yeah, it, yeah. Of course. Yeah, hey, everybody. Yeah. yeah. I want to shout out my parents. There you go. Yep. Shout out to uh, Lucinda and Johnny. Who are yes. always watching. Montoya, some and people. I love them. They're, they're amazing people. Um, shout out to we were talked about them, Justin Sell, Steve Kramer, all those guys. Yeah. Uh, shout out to everybody who was in the chat and asked me some questions, and everybody who texted me. I got your text, so thank you so much. That was a great shout out. That was great. Well done. Yeah. Well, Succinct, but got you know you got to the point, but you made an impact there. I like that. Well done. Thank we didn't so even much. have to do the music to take him off the uh, stage, Oscar style. <laughs> pretty good i combined two sound effects there I'm, I'm learning all right uh we will be back next week with special can we say who the guest is I'm yeah let's do it we have very excited to welcome into the podcast the one the only the legend that is heather dyke heather head, head coach of the unm women's soccer She's team new mexican soccer legend we're so pumped to have her in next week uh we'll be here same time next week six o'clock on all the channels that you're watching right now. Uh, well, lots of people saying they're proud of you. I love it. Uh, Lucinda Marquez Montoya, we're so proud of you, Sergio. Good love point. that. Um, love you guys. But until then, Lucas, somos unidos. We are united.